and i now invite uh, another panel speaker nishant reddy garu he is director of nucleonics company uh, they are into manufacturing of defense equipment and 15 years ago they started an organization called dharma seva uh, as dharmendra na rightly mentioned the action has to start at an individual level that should be the first step and this is very important first an individual should be sensitized and one should be aware then only something can happen but after that now that an individual is sensitized so it's all about how we combine and how we take forward the journey and nishant anna in these 15 years they did really good work through dharma seva created awareness on massive initiatives and um, at a personal level he is a practitioner of vipassana and natural lifestyle and uh, i now invite nishant anna to address the audience on what we can do at our collective level also apart from the individual level and what differences we can make in our own lifestyle to address this problem so it was a very good uh, insight uh, and thought provoking uh, speech by dharmendra garu and uh, he's, he's talked about small solutions which have to start at our own homes in a small little way is very practical i must say so he also mentioned about the covid 19 pandemic which uh, has taken its toll it has really shattered uh, many lives you know in uh, various ways you know it has impacted the youth in a big way and uh, it has affected financially physically mentally in all possible ways so we are still in the process in the process of recovering from it and now we are in this webinar discussing about climate change another existential challenge for all of us so are we ready that's the question that we have in our minds are we ready for this challenge we are not even finished handling covid so what are the lifestyle choices that we have made what is our thought process at this point of time so is it something that can let's say as dharmendra garu said if we get another covid or another uh, disaster or something of that nature so what is our strength at this point of time so we have to look at it in a very holistic manner so that's where uh, i have summarized uh, certain aspects related to this based on my own experiences so to start with i can i have uh, i can say that there's a broadly a lifestyle pattern a thought process which i call it a self centered egoistic type of a pattern that is the most prevalent in the society as on today it's based on the current modern education system which is focusing on the external aspects of the so called development so as a result of that the people are becoming less lesser and lesser empathetic to what's going on around them they are more focused on their own professional growth and their own materialistic growth because that has become a benchmark a status symbol and a benchmark for comparison so throughout their life they are running from a milestone to another milestone to another milestone with there's no end to it and their state of mind is like they get a high when they achieve something and then again they are normal they want to go for the next milestone on the whole they are miserable set of people on the physical level their health deteriorate deteriorates as the age progresses the dependency on the medicine increases because of their lifestyle so as far as the, from the climate perspective they burn carbon that is their contribution so they are doing damage to the environment as we have seen in the uh, previous talk how dependent we are on we are uh, overdrawing the resources so this is one type of lifestyle and thought process which i have summarized so another another type of thought process and lifestyle which i am for which i call it as a indulgent 
type. These are a set of people who are mentally weak and they don't have ready solutions for the real world problems. So they indulge. They indulge in intoxicants, they indulge in drugs, they indulge in passion with the opposite gender, they indulge in gambling, video games, and many other aspects like this. It's a temporary relief that they are deriving from all this. And then again, they are back to their state of mind. They want it again. So it's an addictive behavior that they're developing. So these people are on the destructive path, destruction to themselves, destruction to the people around them. They cause pain to the people around them. They cause pain to the environment. So as far as climate change is concerned, they are very damaging. So they have a damaging role. So my question to one and all who are part of this webinar, is it the kind of lifestyle, are these the kind of lifestyles that we should live in? I'm sure you agree with me that this is certainly not the kind of lifestyle that we should be living in. So coming to myself, I must also admit that I too have passed through this lifestyle of being self-centered and indulging. So I have myself had graduated from a top university in US. I had the, the, the ambition, the drive, I have achieved my material ambitions, professional ambitions. And I have, during my college days or younger days, was also indulging in intoxicants, though not at an addictive level, but yes. But I must say I'm lucky that one day, just like this, in some kind of a, some angel has given me the information about Vipassana. That was the first turning point of my life. And I must consider myself lucky that I decided to try it out. So I tried it, the first 10 days course of Vipassana, and it was transformational, trust me. No amount of lectures, no amount of gyan will, be, will, will transform. But a meditation technique of this nature will transform us from at the subconscious level. The transformation is we are talking of subconscious. When we are discussing, we are discussing at the conscious level. So it, it, it doesn't really hit the subconscious unless there's a shock. Okay. So meditation has the capability to transform at the subconscious level. So I have become more empathetic person than before, a happier person, a concerned, caring person, loving person, more stronger person to face problems of bigger nature. Problems were not no longer problems for me. So that was the kind of experience. And then the professional, the family and the social balance, which is required, that, that came in. Earlier, earlier my focus was entirely on, uh, it was self-centered. So now it is, so there's a balance. Okay, professional, there's a, there's a time and then there's an effort the, that I'm giving. There's a priority. But there's a priority that I'm giving more for the social responsibility. It, that has become more than the other two. The family and the, uh, the professional. So that's, that's a big change. So the thought process has changed. That's the point I'm trying to make. So as I kept going, another thought stuck that why I shouldn't serve people who are needy and the environment. So that's when 15 years ago started this NGO called Dharma Seva. My wife and my cousin, they were kind enough to be 
to have joined me and supported me and they are the trustees and now we have many members who are very committed so that was the second turning point that i decided that there should be an organization this it should be a structured way of service that's how this came out so we have done some good work as because mentioned we have done over 1 lakh plantations way before the harita aram program and then recently we won a judgment in lok ayukta against the government of telangana on the subject of eradication of drugs the judgment clearly said that not enough is being done and the government needs to do, do more and involve other stakeholders like the education institutions ngos like dharma seva should be part of the committee so this was a judgment so there came a strength out of purity of thought that's that's a very important thing when we are on the path of spirituality when the, when we are doing meditation it gives a certain amount of purity and courage and a, and a drive i don't need anybody to drive me it's just self driven and that real drive comes from purity of thought so then after this came the third turning point about 3 3 years ago i came in contact with a way of living called natural lifestyle it's derived from our uh, scriptures the vedas it is living in tune with nature it's basically about the five elements of nature the fire element the earth element the water element air element and the earth element the space element so we are made from that and those should be the inputs those are the ones which we have to derive in a balanced manner so let's say the fire element which is we get from the sunlight so we are away from sunlight what happens our immunity reduces or uh, there are many other health issues that come up so we derive energy from all the elements our food is from all the elements it's not just the food the edible food what we eat sleep is one another important aspect so all these aspects i learned from natural lifestyle so this was the third turning point so today one of the goals of dharma seva is to increase the healthy happy life span of people apart from the env- environmental goals but this is a new objective which we have which we are pu- going to pursue in a very aggressive manner with all the partner ngos and dynamic dedicated people like vikas i have t- i take inspiration from him at his age he is is an amazing guy so we have to all come together for this kind of a objective so i can confidently summarize that these are the only three steps that is the first being getting associated with a ngo who have a social commitment that is the first step first step that one needs to take on this path the second step get into a spiritual path meditation of some sort i am i believe in vipassana so there there can be other meditation techniques too the third one being in tune with nature a natural lifestyle so these three steps will transform us so we don't have to tell ourselves okay i should do something for climate change i should do this i should there is it is effortless when we walk on this path everything happens effortlessly so this particular concept what we just discussed i want to spread it i have already helped many youth on this i practice myself we practice at home we want to tie up with all the education institutions host this webinar on a large on a large scale so we welcome you all to be part of it and the first step what i mentioned to partner with the ngos which i am suggesting so there are lectures after my lecture please 
listen attentively about what they are doing there is also a theme dedicated for ngos so it's a cso uh, and climate change on 5th of november so please log in and then there is a spirituality health and climate change on 6th of november please log into that too we have experts gurus who are coming online for the spirituality talk they are my teachers so please so with this i conclude thank you jai hind connecting and working with an ngo uh, it makes a lot of difference uh, i just want to share my journey here i'm a graduate from bitspilani but i understood life and world outside college so after coming back from delhi to hyderabad i thought that i should engage with ngos and civil society organizations attend seminars on one day at least per week so the people that i met um volunteering is the greatest institution is what i believe it connected me to people across professions it made me more humble and uh, it taught me about resource management collaborations and it gave me access to people whom i have not met otherwise so as nishantana rightly mentioned connecting with an organization will really help in our own locality the better it is and uh, they say it right what we value we take care of them we take care of it so we are maybe in a way we are stuck in our own routines is what um, i understand suppose if we are very tired throughout the day we attended multiple workshops or seminars or did some physical work and tired if a cool breeze comes and hits at us we feel refreshed right if you see if you see the fragrance of a flower otherwise if you come back home and take a shower so as nishantana rightly mentioned this elements of nature has that positive and energizing influence on us but in our daily routines how much time are we taking for ourselves to reconnect with these elements of nature and as he rightly mentioned food is not just the food is the physical food that we consume is one aspect of food so there's a lot more to it and when i first heard him it was an eye opener for me too and thank you so much anna uh, if you really value what nature offers to us and uh, i truly believe that nature has affordable solutions for everything be it for health be it for happiness if we really connect ourselves with nature we ask we don't we don't ask for more in life thank you so much anna